The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to another adventure into the incomprehensible. I like to think of myself as a thinking person, a reflective man, someone not given to fanciful imaginings. That's the way I like to think of myself. But is that the way I am? Because I must admit that my thinking has not solved many problems for me. My reflections have not carried me very far. So now and again, I find it extremely solitary to indulge in fanciful imaginings, to take a short walk into the world of obscurantism. For, as you will hear one of our characters say, the mind makes so many mistakes. I have heard that people of, of great energy, enormous will, people with a surpassing belief in themselves, these are people who simply will not die. They refuse to die. When death is upon them, they are so angry that they will not submit. And you know what energy she had, what a dominating person she was, how much she believed in herself. Never in us, only in herself. People like that, they say, would rather live an evil life than no life at all. Our mystery drama, Sunset to Sunrise, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Monstrous, you say? To want to live on in wickedness rather than die quietly? Perhaps you're right. Oh, of course you are right. And yet, don't we all hope we won't have to die? Not yet? And not altogether? Is this only monstrous? Or is it strangely admirable? In a perverse sort of way, of course. It's over. I've done it. And the mutilated body lies silent and still at my feet. Let her release come soon. Let me try to explain how I came to do this awful thing. It will be necessary to go back. Far back. Even to the day I was born. Or... Farther than that, to the hour when, awash in her warm blood, I felt myself push down that dark canal into the chilling light. Oh, yes. The woman who lies before me is my mother. But I shall content myself with reverting to the day of her funeral. A gray and dismal day. A long line of villagers passed by the open coffin. I waited with my father until the last of them should have finished viewing the corpse. Marie isn't here. She will be, Father. And, and Peter? Oh, I'm not so sure about Peter. His own mother? Not to be here? He's drowning his sorrow, I think. Uh -huh. Oh, you were right about Marie. Here she comes. How strange she looks. How quite distraught. I wouldn't know why. She never had any affection for her mother-in-law. Shh, shh, shh. Hello, Marie. We, we were worried. We... Oh, I, I'm not too late, am I? No, the funeral hasn't even started. I mean, they haven't closed the coffin. Not yet. Good. I suppose Peter's... Oh, where does your brother go when 
When he's needed somewhere? To a bar. I know. At least today, Marie, try... Try to think kindly of your husband. You think kindly of him? He's your son. Shh, shh, shh. We can move up now. Marie, you go first. No, no. Let your father go first. Father? Oh, all right. How sad, how small he looks. Yes, small. You go next, Marie. Marie stood for a second or two by the open coffin, then moved on. Now it was my turn. My eyes filled suddenly with tears. And when I looked down at the quiet body, the expressionless face of my mother, I could scarcely make out her features. I shook the tears away and I, I made an effort to see her clearly. Across her breast lay a long spray of wild roses. Without conscious thought, I did what I had never done while she lived. I leaned over and kissed her on the lips. was over. I sat dry-eyed through it all, and I saw the tears stream down my father's face. After it was over, he said to me, Would you walk home with me, Una? Of course I will, Father. Do you think you could stay and, and talk for a while? I, m maybe I could fix you a little supper. Oh, I'd like that very much. Uh, Ilya won't mind? Oh, it doesn't matter about Ilya. I took his hand. He let me have it like a trusting child. And we started down the road. The familiar landscape had embraced me all my life. And now it brought back sights and sounds from long ago. And on this day, most particularly, the sight and sound of my mother as I had known her. I saw her handsome, flushed face. I heard her voice. How sharper than a serpent's tooth to have a thankless child. Oh, what have I done that was so wrong? Why am I being punished to be given a daughter with no shame, no morals, no, no sense of decency? My father trudged on beside me without speaking. His tears had dried. He looked as he'd always looked. Very sweet, very simple. She had been the single love of his life. I had never heard him speak of any other woman. He'd fallen in love with her when she was 16 and waited five years to marry her. It was my mother who got me to marry him. But he wasn't really of my world. Nothing intellectual about him. What could you expect of a farmer? But marry him, she did. And he never asked for anything else. The two children she bore him, first my brother Peter, and then me. Well, we were simply two minor gifts she added to the supreme one of herself. And Peter always belonged more to her than to him. It's hell to be poor, Peter. Never let it happen to you. Oh, the stories I could tell you about what poverty can do to the ardent soul. It took Peter a while to get started. But once he got his foot on the ladder, he climbed steadily to the top. And along the way, he married the prettiest girl in town, the dark-eyed Marie. We're here, you know. What? <laughs> you, you were dreaming. We're at the house. Oh, yeah, I must have been dreaming. Oh, it's a long time. Very long time since you've been in the old house. Two years. You're... You're happy living with Elia? I don't ask to be happy. But you... Well, you're, you're pleased with the arrangement? It pleases us both. Go on in. It looks the same. Well, nothing's changed. Can I get you something? 
A hot drink. No, no. You sit down and I'll get you something. Oh, take off your coat. Let me help you. Uh, yes, thank you. What's uh, this? What's inside your coat? What? Oh, 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 oh that I, I... I forgot. Well, it's sewn in. Did you do that? What is it? Well, it, 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 it's a sprig of blackthorn. Well, that's what I thought. Why is it sewn inside your coat? Marie put it there. Well, what on earth for? Well, Una, sit down. I... You know, Marie's a strange girl. She she came here from another country and... where they believe strange things. Such as what? Well, you must know. Ilya must have told you. Ilya's parents were gypsies, but he's not. But he hasn't forgotten, has he? What they believe, the gypsies. You don't mean that you... They believe in the living dead. The dead who refuse to die. You mean vampires? That is what you mean, isn't it? I, 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 I never said I believed. But you let her sew the blackthorn into your coat. Well, I couldn't stop her. But why now? Why today? You don't mean... Mother. Marie believes your mother has become a vampire. I wanted to laugh. We were sober, hard-working, God-fearing people. We were not superstitious, given to odd beliefs. But I looked into my father's face, and I could not laugh. I, I've never believed, but... But what? I have heard that people of, of great energy, enormous will, with a... A surpassing belief in themselves. These are the people who will not die. They refuse to die. When death is upon them, they are so angry that they will not submit. You know, Una, what, what energy your mother had, what a dominating person she was, how, how much she believed in herself. She never believed in us, only in herself. That's the way she was. And they say that people like that would rather live the evil life of a vampire than not live at all. Well, I can't believe it. It's horrible. Well, I don't want to believe it, but Marie seems so sure. Well, I'm going to talk to her right now. I, I won't stay for supper, but forgive me. I have to get this terrible notion out of Marie's head before she infects anyone else with it. <laughs> I walk to the village, to the affluent section of the village where Marie and Peter lived. Their house sat on a beautiful green lawn surrounded by an iron fence with a big gate. I pushed it open and I, I went inside and up the long gravel path. Una, don't come any nearer. <laughs> don't be absurd, Marie. I don't want you in my house. We have to talk about this crazy idea you have, Marie. Your father told you. I found the blackthorn you sewed into his coat. It may protect him. And it was you who put the wild roses on her body, wasn't it? To keep her in her coffin. I, I had to do what I could. Oh, but this is all a great foolishness, Marie. Whatever gave you such a crazy idea about your mother-in-law? It's not a crazy idea. I felt it even before she died. I, I sensed that she'd never leave us alone. She'd rather turn into something loathsome and feed off us, drain our strength, drink our blood. And it's happening. It's happening. You want to come in the house? Come. I want you to come in. I want you to see your brother. Is Peter all right? All right. I don't know what you call all right. But look at him. There on the sofa. Oh, 
Peter. Well, he's been that way since your mother died. And a good deal of the time before that. Do you think I've had a husband? Do you think that bloated hulk has been a man ever? Oh, what has that to do with that? Don't you know? Don't you know that vampires have such power over young married people? Don't you know that? No. No. Well, ask Elia. He knows. He is not a gypsy. No, not anymore. Ask his mother. Ask his father. Ask old Wanda Beresti. Oh, it's all fable and myth. It's not real. Do you know that I may never have a child? Or you? Do you know that? No. If she decides, we'll be barren forever. That's the kind of power they have. Oh, you'll never make me believe it. You've got to believe, you of all people. Why me? Because you are a damn fire. What's that? What is a damn fire? Oh, one born of a vampire. Only a damn fire can see a vampire. But, but, but I, I can't see my mother. I, I'm not a damn fire. Go oh. home. Go home, Una. One of these nights, between sunset and sunrise, you will see her. <laughs> Vampires. Vampires and their offspring, the Damfires. They may shock you, repel you, terrify you, but never, never will they bore you. We'll be back shortly with Act Two. of Act One, Una decided to return to Elia, her gypsy lover, a gypsy from the remotest regions of Transylvania, where all the best vampires come from. At least all the best stories about vampires come from there, and Elia knows them all. But they're all superstition, Una, handed down from generation to generation. You don't believe them. I used to when I was very young. You see, the stories were always about very, very powerful people. I think they couldn't get used to the idea that very powerful people could actually die. My mother was a very powerful woman. Ah, but she died, like everybody else, sooner or later. You never really knew my mother. Mm, I wasn't welcome in her house. I think I only came here to live with you to... to spite her. All my life she told me how immoral I was, how wicked, how filled with wild desires. And you were? Yes. And you knew where to take those wild desires, didn't you? Yes. And what man to give them to? Yes. Well, lucky me. It was to show her, to say yes to her. Yes, I am like that. Yes, I'm what you say. Yes, I'm loose and immoral and wicked and all those things. And yet... You're right not to love me because I'm not lovable. I'm hateful and vile. No, yes. no, 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 no. You are not hateful. Oh, you don't know. I know enough. Lie still now. Let me, let me hold you. Yes. Hold me. Huh? What's that? What's what? I thought I heard something. Don't hear anything. Don't you hear it? Listen. You don't. Uh, it's a bat. A bat? Turn on the light. No, no, please. I don't want to see it. Ilya, get rid of it. I won't touch it. What are you doing? I, I, I put it on my clothes. Why? What? It's why? your mother. It's your mother, Una. She's back. It's not. You said you didn't. Never mind me. what I said. I was wrong. It's a bat in the rafters. It's not my mother. How do you know? How do you know, Katura? Be. The old women were right. They come back, you see. No. They come back to live off the living and suck our blood. Ilya, where are you going? To my mother's house. Ilya, don't go. Mother? All night long. I lay in 
the dark, listening to the bats swoop and chatter in the rafters. Sunset to sunrise, I lay awake and listened. For as the warning light of the sun started to glow in the east, the bat was suddenly quiet. Hadn't Marie told me that the old stories all agreed that vampires could only venture out between sunset and sunrise? The bat was gone. And I was alone. Then came a pounding at the door. I got out of bed and I went to answer it. Had Ilya come back? Had he felt better of his foolish fears? And come back? Ilya? Oh, Peter. Let me in, Una. Yes, come in. I have to talk to you. You're very drunk. Never mind. Never mind about that. I have to ask you something important. Well, first tell me why you didn't come to our mother's funeral. Never mind about that either. Marie was there. Marie was not there. Not for the funeral. She went to the church to put some wild roses on the body. She didn't stay to see her buried. Huh. Not that she's really buried. Not that she'll ever be really buried. She'll be around for a long time until she's drained us all dry. And long after that, maybe forever, who knows? Do vampires ever really die? Peter, stop that. Our mother is not a vampire. Is it true? Marie says it's true. Is what true, Peter? Did you... Did you kiss her? When she was lying in her coffin, did you really kiss her? Yes, I did. Oh. Oh, no. Why did you do that? I don't know, quite. I, I think it was because I'd never kissed her before, and, and I was sorry that I hadn't. Don't you know what you've done? I haven't done anything. You've put your lips to her poison. You've made yourself like I her. I haven't done anything. I said goodbye to her. I kissed her goodbye. That's all. Don't you know that vampires spread their foul contagion on the living? Isn't it bad enough that you and I are damn fires just because she gave us birth? Stop it. Stop it. I don't want you to talk this way. You and I can see her. Have you seen her? Of course I haven't. Uh, I have. Shall I tell you why I didn't come to the funeral? I was with her, that's why. She came to my room and stood in the door. She was very beautiful. She had on her white lace dress. And she smiled at me. You were drunk. You... Uh, she didn't mind. She just smiled. But then her smile grew wider and wider till the whole room was filled with her smile. It, it took away. It took away the sunshine. I tell you, Una. Peter! Peter! Oh, Lord! Come in! Peter, are you all right? Come in! The door's not locked! Oh, Marie! Yes. Huh. I thought he'd be here. Don't try to move him. Let him sleep it off. He's just, just drunk. He's been drunk for days. Let him lie there. But just before you got here, he was, he was trying to tell me that he saw our mother, that she came to his room. Only the damp fires can see a vampire. You made him believe it. Because it's true. And Una, there's something else that's true, and you'd best know it. Only a damp fire can kill a vampire. Kill? The best way others can do is try to protect ourselves with the blackthorn and the wild roses and all oh, that. I will not listen. There is something you can do. You could help us to protect ourselves. Marie, I just don't believe in this superstition. You don't. Uh, but, but we do. Nobody slept a wink since the day she died. Oh, they know she'll go after us first, but no one in the village is really safe. Oh, what do you want me to do? Move the body across the river. What for, in God's name? Wanda Beresti says it's very difficult for a vampire to cross over water. I don't believe any of this. I don't believe it's happening. Well, it's happening, all right. And everyone believes it but you. You can't make the rest of us live in this torment because you refuse to believe. Could be right. You... You will move the body across the river? Oh, I'll have to talk to Father. Oh, talk to him. Talk to him now. Before it's too late. 
I left Marie to get Peter home the best way she could. And I started off for my father's house. How could I ask him to disinter the body of his beloved wife only two days after she'd been laid to rest? What kind of daughter would nourish the horrid thought in her father's mind that his wife might be a vampire? Oh, how I needed someone to tell me what to do. Mora. Hello, Father. May I come in? Of course you may come in. Oh, I... I'm so glad to see you. You're all right, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, I, I'm all right. Oh, now, can you stay for a little while? As long as you like. Oh, good, good. I could make a little supper if you could stay that long. Father, Peter came to see me today. Oh. How was he? Drunk. But not so drunk that he couldn't say what he came to say. And what was that? that I had contaminated myself when I kissed my mother's mouth as she lay in her coffin. Oh, my dear girl. I... Do you believe that, Father? Oh, my dear. I, I, I'm so confused. You do believe it? I, I don't know what to believe anymore. Marie came to see me, too. Oh, yes? Well, well what did she want? Marie wants Mother's coffin moved to the other side of the river. Oh. Your mother is buried in the family plot. I, I promised her. I... Why does she want the body moved? Marie says that to to cross water is is very hard for for vampires. <laughs> It's so hard when everyone around you believes one thing to stand alone and believe another. I kissed my father gratefully. Grateful for his kindness, his patience. He asked me to stay the night. There was still my old room. I lay down on the narrow bed, but my eyes would not close. I stared at the black square I knew to be the window. Beyond the door, I could hear my father washing the supper dishes. Then I heard it. Very faint. Very faint, but unmistakable. Someone tapping on the window pane. I lay rigid in the narrow bed. And then I heard... Vampire sounds? I don't know, or I tell you. Half a century ago, a vampire was actually tried in a London court. A gentleman, it was, by the name of George Haig. Unhappily, we have no record of the gentleman's voice, and it all happened so long ago, I have no idea whether or not he was ever convicted. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. young, I thought, how convenient and how very right that we had entered into the age of enlightenment, leaving occult fantasies behind. As I grew a little older, I was not so sure. Now that I'm quite grown up, I am not sure at all but what the dreams and frenzies of an earlier time did not serve its people as well or better than mine are serving me. bed and ran to the window. There was no moon, but the stars were very bright. Bright enough so that the trees cast wavering shadows on the grass. Oh, no! And then I saw her beneath a poplar tree, just outside the window, dressed in white lace, her long hair falling to her waist. 
she lifted her face to the window. And by the light of the stars, I saw it. Not hideous. Not obscene. No. Beautiful as it had been in life. But transfigured now by such appalling grief as I had never seen before. The dark eyes staring. The cheeks glistening with tears. The mouth stretched wide as it cried. I needed my father. I could not bear the sight of this apparition by myself. I heard him moving about in the kitchen and I ran to him. Oh, father. Father. She's here. What, dear? What did you say? She's here. Mother is here. Is she? No, no, no. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. Um, where, where, where is she? Outside the window. I heard her calling me and I went to the window and I saw her standing under the tree. And, oh, father. She looks so sad. My dear little girl, you've had a dream. It's not a dream. She's there. So soon after the funeral, it's natural for you to dream. Oh, come with me. I'll show you. You're overwrought, dear child. Come with me, you'll see. If there were a moon, you'd see quite clearly, but even by the starlight, you can see her. Look. Look there. Where? I I don't see her. Beneath a big poplar tree right there. I don't see anything. In her white dress. Look at her. I can't see anything. Nothing but the grass and a few shadows. That's all. That's all? Oh, my dear child, you had a dream. No, no, no dream. I saw her. But you can't see her. She, she must be a vampire. And I, I am a vampire. What are you saying? Only the offspring of a vampire can see the vampire. Peter said he saw her. I know I saw her. We are her offspring, Peter. And I are our vampires. Oh, no, please, please, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, I know, I know very well. <laughs> Only a vampire can see a vampire. Only a vampire can kill a vampire. Well, then, I... Uh, what, are you, what are you doing, Ora? Open this window. No, no, don't, don't. And invite her in. Mother, come in. Come in. Your daughter is waiting to receive you. My father rushed from the room. I can't stay. I can't watch. I can't... I stood by the window, waving to the white figure beneath the poplar tree. It was several minutes before she moved, and then very slowly, with uncertain steps, she came toward the window. She looked up at me like a child that is not certain of her welcome. Una? You've come back to live off of us, haven't you, Mother? Even in death. We are your possessions, your very prized possessions, because from us you drew pride and haughtiness and self-importance. That's what we did for you in life, and that's what you mean we should do for you now. That's it, isn't it, Mother? Oh, no. No. Forgive. Forgive? What went before. Forgive it. Forgive? I've never heard you say that word. Now, now I say it. Forgive me. All that I did, I beg of you, forgive me all my sins. Father was right. This is a dream. Forgive me that I may lie quiet in my grave. Oh, God, let me wake up. God, deliver me from this dream. You don't hear me. Oh, Una, why don't you hear me? Perhaps I fainted. I, I don't know. I suppose I did, because I remember nothing more until I was wakened by a knock on the door. I opened my eyes. I was lying on the floor next to the narrow bed, and the sun was streaming through the window. I got to my feet. Come in, Father. Celia. Are you 
Are you all right, Una? Yes, I'm all right. You look so pale. Oh, I, I had a bad night, a bad dream. Yes, your father told me. My father? He went to fetch you. That, that, that's why you're here? I would have come back to you anyway. I only went to see my mother to ask her what she knows about vampires. All the old women were there. Wanda, Baresti, and all the others. Oh, they must have filled you full of stories. <sighs> Una, when a whole town believes that a vampire is loose, they become terrified. A vampire, Una, is, is soulless, mindless energy on the march, knowing neither good nor evil, only its own desires. And the vampire must be killed, Una. Do you know why? Lest we become like the vampire. We can become like that, Una. Unless a stake is driven through the vampire's heart. And who is to do that? You know. Only a damn fire can kill a vampire. A stake must be driven through the throat of the corpse. If blood spurts from the throat, it is proof that a vampire lived in that body. Can I do such a thing? To my own mother's corpse? It must be done before the sun sets. Or she'll walk abroad tonight. Ilya, do you know that I thought she was here last night? In this very room? And she kept saying, Forgive. Forgive. <laughs> and then, of course, I... I knew it was a dream because my mother would never say such a thing as forgive. She... She was asking you to forgive her? Imagine a proud woman like my mother say a thing like that. You heard her say, forgive me? In my dream, yes. I suppose it's because I... I hated her so much in life. I liked the idea that she was sorry for all the grief she'd caused us. Oh, now listen... While I was at my mother's house, she told me that there had been cases now and then where a dead person returned night after night and terrified everyone because it was taken for granted that the dead one had become a vampire. But it wasn't always true. There were times when the dead one was what they call a returner. A returner? What is that? One who comes back, so my mother says... To ask forgiveness. Are you telling me that my mother did come back last night asking to be forgiven? That it was no dream? It's... It's possible, isn't it? And if... If it is true? If she is a returner? You... You must get a writ of absolution from the bishop and place it on her body. How can I tell? How can I know that she is a returner and not a vampire? You'll have to go through with it. Before sundown. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Drive a stake through my own mother's throat. You know, more than half the village believes your mother has become a vampire. Marie wants you to move her body across the river. And even my father is wearing the black thorn in his coat. And even I. When I heard the bat in the rafters, I thought it might be your mother. You must have the grave opened, Una, and the coffin. And before the sun goes down, you must... Drive the stake into your mother's throat. Then we shall see whether she is a returner or that foul creature of the night, a vampire. Elia himself uncovered the coffin and pried it open. I told my father what I meant to do before the sun went down. If you must, my daughter... If you think you must. If she is really a vampire, Father, only I can do it. And I went to Peter and Marie. You you wouldn't ask me to do it, Una. No, I wouldn't ask you, Peter. You're very brave, Una. I'd have been content if you'd only moved her body across the river. There's so much talk in the village. So much fear, so much horror. We must settle this thing once and for all. I went from house to house telling everyone to be by the graveside just before sunset. They looked at me with pity, some of them. Others with revulsion. 
but all, all promised to be there, and so it happened. I, I wish to thank you all for coming here. You all know of the belief that is spread through our village. Many of you share in it. My own family leans toward it. The belief that the body of the woman who lies here is not a corpse, but the shell that houses a vile and loathsome being, a vampire, that this vampire threatens the lives of all of us, and the sanity, the spirit, and the soul of any who escape with their lives. Listen, I have here a stake. The sun is setting. While there is still a little light, I shall drive this stake through my mother's throat. If blood gushes forth, then I shall have killed a vampire. I sh shall also have murdered my mother. If no blood comes from the body, we will know that she is no more than a returner who is asking forgiveness for the wrong she did in life. As we all one day will have to ask for forgiveness for the wrong we have done. Yes, 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 yes. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for yourselves. And if you can give her your forgiveness, the bishop will give her absolution. I hold the stake high for all of you to see. And... And... No! Oh, oh, oh. There is no blood. Go. Send for the bishop. It's over. I've done it. And the mutilated body of my mother lies at my feet. Oh. Let her release come soon. What was it someone said, speaking of vampires, that they are soulless energy on the march? There are days when the news is very, very bad. I think I hear the vampires chattering in the air. They're all around us ready to swoop down and suck our blood, destroy our pride, and leave us supine and helpless. You needn't call them vampires if you don't want to. It doesn't matter what you call them, but look out for them. They may not be returners at all. I'll be back shortly. mystery of life, and sometimes not sweet at all, but bitter, baffling, and impenetrable. I can offer you but a minor clue to the solution. Given humanity, with its weaknesses and its imperfections, life could not be otherwise. Life is not the mystery. We are. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Bryna Rayburn, William Johnston, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.